I think it's time I share my completely honest and fair opinions about Star Wars Outlaws. This is where the fun begins. Star Wars Outlaws has definitely been the most polarizing game I think I've ever played on my channel and had the most mixed reception to in terms of comments and people's feedback. I think a lot of people are seeing that I'm having a good time with the game and that I'm enjoying playing through with my walkthrough series and that perhaps I'm ignoring some of the glaring issues it has. Overwhelmingly, the response to me playing the game has been positive, which I really appreciate you guys, but there's definitely still a ton of negativity around it and I'm getting negative comments and people saying I've been paid by Disney or Ubisoft, which would be amazing. I wish I was being paid to say the things I'm saying, but full disclosure, everything I've said about Star Wars Outlaws is my own opinion. I'm not being paid. I'm just doing this because I enjoy the game just as I have with every other Star Wars game that's released in its own way. But that said, this video is going to be broken up into, I think, two different sections. One, all the positive things that I like about the game and one, the negative stuff that I really don't like. Star Wars Outlaws, I think, is the type of game that you need to give a bit of time before it kind of clicks. For me, the intro and the opening missions were definitely a bit slow and I didn't really get grabbed by the game until a few hours in when you, I guess you make it to more of the open world and you can fully explore and go where you want. But I find it so funny. I posted this tweet the other day saying this is actually so beautiful, but it's just a time lapse of the day-night system in the game on Tatooine in the desert at the Lars homestead or a similar kind of location and watching the two suns fall into the night. It's beautiful. And even in the comments section of this, people are saying that this game sucks and that I'm being paid to make this and say nice things about the game. I guess, yes, technically I'm saying the game is beautiful. This is beautiful and beauty is subjective. As they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And in no way do I want to diminish other people's opinions about this kind of stuff and what they think of the game. But with that said, there are definitely also things I don't like about the game. I don't think this is the greatest Star Wars game ever made, as some have claimed. However, I think it does certain things better than any Star Wars game ever has, and then does others not as good as other Star Wars games already have. Also, please let me know what you'd rate this game out of 10 in the comments below. I'm really curious to see what you guys rate it and why you rate it the rating you give it. Without further ado, here is my full review of Star Wars Outlaws. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> also, if this video gets, say, a million likes, I will personally convince Ubisoft to make a sequel and improve everything you have wrong with this game. Okay, I'm going to start by talking about some of the story and then we'll go into some of the gameplay and then evolve from there. The story itself for me was not that memorable. I enjoyed certain elements of KVS's story and I honestly did end up liking her as a character much more than I initially thought I would. I kind of thought initially just based on trailers that she was perhaps a bit cookie cutter and that we haven't really seen enough to make a decision about her. Having played through the entire game now, I appreciate that they're trying to, I guess, in a way, create the female Han Solo, in a, in a sense. Oh, that's the experience they're going for with this game anyway. You definitely get a strong sense of the smuggler's adventure. Playing as someone who's basically mostly just looking out for themselves, is happy to work with multiple syndicates and multiple factions to, I guess, achieve their goals. But also someone who's kind of rough around the edges, who is still inexperienced, a bit of a rookie. And in that sense, KVS is incredibly flawed. Also, just as a heads up, this is probably going to have spoilers for the story, so if you don't want to get spoiled, don't watch this. I'm going to continue from here. But I enjoyed that she basically got double crossed by pretty much everyone in the game. Like everyone at the end of the day was just working for themselves and she got screwed over a bunch of times, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it's part of her character arc of learning not to trust anyone and that she's basically only going to look out for herself. But then also, I guess what ends up happening with ND5 and the fact she literally goes after and saves him was kind of also the evolution of her character. Interesting how she values the life of a droid and they're really focusing on that. Giving the droid just as much personality and value as a human, which is exactly what the original trilogy captured as well. Going after R2-D2 and C-3PO when they were, I guess, stuck in the desert after the whole Jabba's sail barge exploded thing. There were multiple times that the main characters in the original trilogy went after to save the droids and helped each other out of situations. They're part of the crew. You can't leave them behind. And that was displayed once again in this game with KVS's relationship with ND5, the sexiest droid alive. Now, if I have to to make a comparison to other recent Star Wars games, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor's story is much more memorable than that of Star Wars Outlaws. I personally think that the Jedi games are some of the best storytelling to come out of the Disney Star Wars era. But also that said, I would not be opposed to the idea of a second Outlaws style game continuing the journey of KVS, where we get access to more planets, locations, and worlds. Because for me, those were the standout of this experience. Exploring Tatooine on bike and on foot with this level of detail for me was the best part of Star Wars Outlaws. Setting foot in the sand for the first time and realizing, oh my gosh, it's all here. I am literally on Tatooine. This is the planet 
we visited so many times, yes, which was also some people's complaint, but have you ever been able to walk around with such freedom, apart from maybe in Star Wars Galaxies? But let's be real, Star Wars Galaxies, old game, and I guess doesn't have the same visual fidelity that we get in Star Wars Outlaws. Realizing when I got to this planet, seeing it all here, the fact I could travel to Mos Eisley, the fact I could ride my speeder bike through the Dune Sea, the fact there's a crate dragon here, and this has no gameplay or story implications. I don't believe it's mentioned in any side mission, there's no actual reason to come here, they just decided to put a Kray Dragon in the desert, because that's what would be here on Tatooine, and they thought it'd be cool. Yes, George Lucas was a huge Dune fan, and yes, Tatooine is largely based on Arrakis, but how cool is it to be able to be part of this, and then also get eaten by the Kray Dragon? Funnily enough, the first time the Crate Dragon ate me, I was unable to reload my save file. The Crate Dragon actually broke my save file and I couldn't load back into the game and actually had to load an older save. And yes, I know that this game is a bit buggy and glitchy at times, but I kind of thought it was hilarious that the Crate Dragon is literally a permadeath. And I think I was lucky on my playthrough that I didn't really encounter many bugs and errors, glitches. I was playing on PS5 and I heard other players had a much less favorable experience. I guess I was the same for Jedi Survivor though. That game launched and I had such a great time with it. And so many other people I saw complaining about all the issues it had, the bugs, the glitches, the freezes, the crashes. So maybe I just got lucky in that sense. I didn't really encounter really any other game breaking bugs. So my experience was rather smooth throughout with the game. Disappointing to see it had a lot of bugs at launch, but honestly nowadays a lot of games do. And even though the games go through quality assurance and play testing before they're released, it's hard to test for the sheer amount of players that will play a game like this at launch. There's just so many different things going on with everyone's different playthroughs that I think it's hard to test for everything. That said, always disappointing to see people had issues. I hope they're gonna be sorted soon if they're not already. But going back to my point about world design and open world exploration, to me, this was the best part of the game for sure, unbelievable. If we're being honest, there are really only three fully open worlds in Star Wars Outlaws, being Tatooine, Tushara, and Akiva. Kajimi is, yes, technically open world, but it's much narrower streets and there's not as much of it as there are of the other maps. And then also Cantonica, Canto Bite, as far as I'm aware, is only playable in the story missions. But man, did Mass Vent Entertainment do a good job of making these worlds feel vast and detailed. And I talked about that with their Avatar game as well, which came out last year, same studio, that developed Star Wars Outlaws. To me, the standout there was also the world design, the fact the world felt alive and massive and detailed. And I loved that each planet here felt unique in its own right. Recreating Tatooine, obviously based on the so many different iterations we've seen of it, I thought was really impressive. Obviously they weren't able to include everything. For example, there's no Mos Espa, but they did put some cool stuff in there, like the Mos Eisley Cantina, even walking through the streets of Mos Eisley. They put the Lars Homestead. They included Toshi Station. Like I said, the Dune Sea, Jabba palace I thought was an awesome recreation of that location. A little disappointed there was no live Sarlacc pit, there was the dead one that you go on the side mission for, would have loved to see a real life Sarlacc pit and be swallowed by it, but I guess they chose the Krayt Dragon over that. Who do you think would win in a fight between a Krayt Dragon and a Sarlacc pit? I know the answer, Krayt Dragons eat Sarlacc pits. Can you imagine eating a Sarlacc pit? This is getting weird. So Tushara was a planet that Massive Entertainment created in collaboration with Lucasfilm. It was their own idea for a planet, I think is where you end up spending most of your time in Star Wars Outlaws. And to me, it feels like it fits straight into the Star Wars galaxy. This place has so much detail with the rock formations, the windy plains based on savannah style locations, the windswept trees. But when it comes to exploring these open worlds, one thing I didn't really like was the fact that you're quite limited inside the cities. For example, you're unable to draw your blast and attack anyone inside the city, even if you have the max wanted level. In fact, if you go into one of the cities and get approached by a stormtrooper when you're in a city, when you have the max wanted level or any wanted level, you immediately get arrested and are unable to do anything about it or defend yourself. For me, this is frustrating and it's a bit of the rigidity of these style of games that I don't enjoy that sets it apart from, I guess, a rockstar open world in one aspect. Rockstar open worlds basically allow you to do anything at any time, it feels like, in a manner of speaking. There's a level of sandbox that they achieve with their style of open worlds versus this style where you're still, I guess, limited and the gameplay feels a bit more rigid in certain elements, just as it is here. This is one example of that feeling. And for this reason, I honestly haven't spent that much time in some of the cities in these games. The game really shines, I think, in the broader open world and when you're exploring these savannas, when you're exploring the desert of Tatooine, when you're exploring the jungles of Akiva, rather than just walking the streets of one of these cities. You also can't 
want to actually shoot friendly NPCs, so some of the other cars and bikes you see riding around, if they're not part of one of the syndicate factions, you can't actually open fire or attack them. And even if you try and blow them up with a grenade, nothing happens, which is a bit frustrating to me. I want the freedom to be able to do whatever I want, but let's be real guys, this is Disney. Were they ever gonna let that happen? A lot of people seem to also have a real problem with this game graphically, and there are a few things I want to say about this. First of all, facial animations, yes, are a bit frustratingly archaic at times. There are some sequences where I thought they were okay, but just the general facial animations are a bit behind. Yes, I know they were going for some RPG style elements with this game, and there is a lot of dialogue, especially when you're doing all of the side missions, but at the same time, I feel like the standard here is just a little bit low, and this is something I said the first time I played Outlaws at a preview event months and months ago, a bit rough around the edges, and you'd like this kind of thing to be, I guess, a little more advanced than it is, especially in 2024. It didn't really bother me hugely, because I was more just enjoying the exploration of the open world, but when it came to certain cutscenes, I thought they definitely could have done better here. That was my takeaway from this anyway. But in terms of other graphics, I don't really see why people are saying the game has bad graphics. There are certain explosions where I'm like, okay, that does look a little sketchy and a little bit old, but it's definitely not enough to take away from my experience of the grander world. The game looks stunning, especially in the open world. Exploring these maps, these maps and locations are vibrant and beautiful. Space exploration as well, ship design, KVS's bike. Like I said, some of the characters do look a little off and not as detailed as you would potentially like. Yes, from some angles at certain times, KVS herself and her model doesn't look that impressive, but at the same time, when you're exploring the open world, this really didn't bother me. It wasn't enough to be like, oh yeah, this game has bad graphics. The graphics are stunning. The detail in the water and the ripples, the weathering system, the day-night system, the expansiveness and detail in these open worlds, it feels handcrafted. And I think we also really need to give credit to the seamless travel between planets and locations. The space to ground is about as good as anything we've ever had, if not better, and the best space to ground that's ever been created in any Star Wars game. And if you want this to be, apart from this little cutscene of KVS turning on the ship, space to ground travel is seamless, and traveling between all these worlds is seamless. Jumping to light speed, especially for the first time, and going to another planet, you feel like you're on a journey with KVS, and if you get immersed in that part of this game, and experience what it's like to be in her shoes, to feel like you're traveling between all these locations in the Star Wars galaxy, we've never had that before, and that is truly impressive. That said, I also really appreciate that there are fast travel options, and to multiple locations, and the fact it loads pretty quickly. Like I said, I'm playing on PS5, but a fast travel for me would load in I think 10 or 15 seconds, which loading an entire map like this, I'm not sure how it works, but it was pretty cool and fast. And I'm like, wow, we're already here. Once again, feels pretty seamless, even though you're jumping between different locations. And this was especially helpful for me trying to be as efficient with my time as possible, filming videos, making videos and jumping between planets when I have to you know, get certain shots or try something out. It's pretty seamless. But most of the time I would ride my bike back to the ship, back to the trailblazer, get in the trailblazer, take off, jump to light speed, travel to the next planet, land on the planet and go exploring because it just felt so much more immersive and like you're in that world. I want to take that experience as many times as I possibly can. I also really enjoyed the space locations when it comes to world design and map design. It felt like there was enough to do in space then it was interesting enough to hang around for a bit. I definitely haven't spent heat of time in space. I've done some stuff, I guess, testing wanted levels and seeing how the Empire react differently to different situations when you're bombing their bases, is how many TIE fighters are they sending after you on different difficulties, that kind of thing. But at the same time, space felt unique in each different location, which I think was another real standout here. They really made a conscious effort to make space locations feel original. For example, Kijimi space is definitely my favorite with this entire cloud storm lightning section here, the nebula. Flying through this felt precarious and just immersive, like you were in some mystical space location. I loved it. I feel like I want to spend more time in space because I feel like there's a bit more to do here and a lot more stuff to unlock. And that's honestly one thing I haven't really done too much of yet, going around to each of the different locations and trying to unlock more gear and upgrade KVS. I mean, I spent a bit of time upgrading the speeder bike and then some of her expert abilities, but some people are telling me that I should have more stims and more health by now. I guess I just haven't been following those certain progressions because I've been too carried 
carried away with other elements of the game. I really love infiltrating an Imperial base. That was one experience I wasn't expecting to like so much. And in a sec, I'm gonna talk more about the AI and the stealth mechanics, but going in and out of an Imperial base, being spotted at the last second and realizing you have to gun it to get out of there, you have to just make a run for it because you're about to be overwhelmed with Imperials is exhilarating. Going in to steal a file or even things for certain upgrades and stuff, even just exploring the open world outside of missions. Sometimes there were bases that I'd be like, oh, that's cool. I wonder what's in there. And I'd go sneak my way in, find some stuff and then leave and then get spotted at the last second and then have to fully make a run for it as the Empire start chasing you and hunting you down. Awesome. And that said, I feel like Star Wars Outlaws is a much more immersive and realistic experience on the higher difficulties. If you set your wanted level to the max difficulty along with your health and the enemy difficulty, the game suddenly becomes incredibly challenging and you feel like, yeah, if you get spotted, you're kind of screwed. And let's be real, Star Wars Outlaws is largely in its combat sections stealth based. This is something I really wasn't expecting from day one with this game, even playing it at the preview demos. I was kind of a bit surprised that it had such a heavy emphasis on stealth. But overall, I ended up enjoying it much more than I thought I would have. I am not a stealth player. I do not enjoy stealth games. I have not successfully played games like Deus Ex. But with this, I guess because some elements are a bit more basic and maybe because the enemies aren't as intelligent, it was kind of fun. Yes, it's kind of comical at times. Yes, you think you're spotted and there's a guy right next to you and you're still not spotted. Find it quite exhilarating sneaking my way around some of these bases and having to infiltrate. Frustrating at times for sure. The stealth can be brutal at times and there is a bit of a learning curve to it. But once you get the hang of using Nyx and being able to use him as a distraction, use him, I guess, to fetch you weapons, to open open vents to interact with the environment around you and you kind of learn the system they've created for chaining stealth abilities together, sneaking around certain parts, shoot this, unlock this, activate this. There's a lot of fun to be had with it. But now that we're talking about stealth, we really need to talk about the takedown animations because oh my goodness, these are a bit disappointing. This is one part of the game that I'm like, why would they kind of do this? It's just a bit of a strange decision. And I guess they're trying to be a bit more on the family friendly PG side of things and they can't do anything too brutal, but KVS punching stormtroopers with her bare fists is definitely frustrating and is cannon breaking and just doesn't make sense. I would have been much more okay with this if she had perhaps like a baton that you could use in stealth situations that she could whack them with. For me, this would have made a lot more sense. I mean, I guess a bit more like Jin Oso. I believe she had that in Star Wars Battlefront or even just an extension for k Vess's blaster that acted in stealth situations. Even if she was using her blaster, the butt of her blaster to kind of whack a stormtrooper as opposed to punching them with her bare fists when they're wearing armor, anything but this would have been better. I don't know. Some of the stealth and takedown animations were just super comical for me. I didn't really focus on it too much during my playthroughs to be honest and was just like yeah whatever these are the takedown animations I'm just gonna enjoy the game for what it is at this time but overall this is something I wish was so much better in this game and probably probably my biggest complaint also some of the takedown animations where Nyx distracts them and then they turn around and look at you kind of dumbfounded is just kind of a bit silly all these guards are supposedly supposed to be on high alert and they just look a little stupid if I'm being totally brutally honest definitely not a standout gameplay mechanic and something if they continue development of another game like this down the future I'd like to see vastly improved. Like I said though, it didn't really take away from my broader experience of this game because the gunplay I really enjoyed. K vs Blaster I really grew to liking. Initially I was like yeah this feels so kind of underwhelming and just I feel like I'm underpowered against multiple enemies and you realize quite early on that you can't just run and gun and there is a emphasis on stealth and you kind of have to use stealth otherwise you're gonna get killed especially on the harder difficulties. But switching between the different modules and components for a blaster as you continue to unlock these as you make your way through the game, I found to be really fun and having to use different blasters in different combat scenarios. For example, if there was a droid, I'd switch to the ion. If there was someone with the shield, you switch to the ion. I started using the blaster power shot more often and the explosive shot, even switching between burst fire and single shot for the regular blaster. There's so much variety in what you can do here and I guess you can develop your own play style around this. And I didn't mind the idea of picking up certain weapons in 
the environment that enemies dropped. Sometimes in situations I found it better to literally just use K's pistol rather than pick up a weapon because for example there'd be enemies that need to be killed with ion and the pickup weapons don't have this. Also I found picking up weapons in the environment much more enjoyable once I got Nyx to do it for me. There were multiple times where I'd realize I was running out of cover to go and get a weapon and then being killed on my way to the weapon and I'm like why am I just not sending Nyx out there? Nyx isn't going to die. He's going to be fine. They literally said you can't kill Nyx and then no harm will come to Nyx in this game. They lied to me though because he got captured by Jabba the Hutt and put in his cell down downstairs with the Rancor. I didn't expect that to happen. That was heartbreaking. I was like oh my gosh I have to go save Nyx and then the Gamorrean guards were incredibly frightening because they're big brutes that you can't actually kill unless you have the electroshock prod which I didn't have and still don't I believe. Also it was really dark in that section of the game and they were one-shotting me and I was full freaking out that I was going to have to repeat the mission again and fully on high alert and had this reaction when one of them surprised me from behind. <laughs> Let's talk about KVS's speeder bike. I personally really enjoyed riding this. It feels fluid, smooth. I like that you can upgrade it, but initially was getting really frustrated with it though because I felt like almost every tiny rock that I'd come across I'd crash into and she'd fly off. Some of the animations when falling off the bike, falling off cliffs and stuff are a bit frustrating. There's no real ragdoll with KVS. It's very rigid. She kind of just goes into an animation every time she falls off, regardless of the physics and circumstances of how she falls off. Once again, not hugely bothering, but just, I guess, if we're making the comparison to a GTA or Red Dead style game, this is one glaring difference and one thing that I think Red Dead and GTA do better. But overall, once I unlocked the boost, once I learned to drift, once I learned when to use the jump, the speeder bike gameplay became really fun. That said, I do wish you could actually shoot freely from your speeder bike and have another function of aiming and shooting while riding as opposed to the Deadeye style ability where you lock onto multiple targets. It's still fun doing this, but having to build your adrenaline meter every time you're surrounded by enemies, not just being able to freely shoot even though you have a blaster right there was a bit frustrating to be honest. Why not just let me shoot on the speeder bike? I guess it's the design they chose to take with this. I guess they preferred it to be this way, but I want the freedom to be able to shoot when and where I want. Side missions and bonus content so far I found to be mostly enjoyable. It's definitely just the kind of experience where the game sets you on multiple different quests to explore, I guess, different parts of the open worlds they've crafted here and unlock new items, find new quests, new information, new treasure, new money, and level up your abilities in the game. I wouldn't say I found any of these side missions that compelling. For example, I played the Jubba's Gambit mission, which was the controversial additional mission you got if you purchased the season pass. And for me, although it it was fun and yes although you did get extra cutscenes with Jabba the Hutt you do see him in his manipulative I guess all-knowing ways the fact he is a big bad crime boss and the fact you get prompt with this decision as to whether to surrender to the Empire or to flee although I think both lead to the same outcome it's kind of cool but also just a little bit underwhelming if I'm being totally brutally honest but a lot of these style of missions end up feeling a little bit the same just with different faces for example it's like go here collect this thing shoot shoot these enemies, go here, do this, talk to this person, they're going to lead you to this person, you're going to unlock this thing. It's kind of a similar theme or gameplay experience, not every time, but they definitely feel a bit repetitive. But I honestly didn't mind so much because the world design for me is so interesting that you're exploring different parts of these worlds and different locations, and just being in these locations for me was kind of interesting enough. Now, the reputation system, I also personally enjoyed as a gameplay mechanic. I enjoyed that there are basically certain areas of certain maps you can't really access or go into unless you have a good rep with that particular syndicate and that they literally send kill squads after you which get annoying and frustrating if you're in terrible reputation with them. For example the pikes hate me and no matter where I go in the galaxy it feels like they're constantly hunting for me and that's kind of annoying and something you need to fix in the game you need to improve your reputation with them whereas having good favor with other syndicates like the huts open up fast travel locations for you and open up other gameplay incentives and rewards like they leave some gear in your ship if you get to certain levels within the syndicate you're able to freely walk around their hideouts with excellent reputation and even though the reputation system does feel a bit surface level at times and it doesn't really have any larger gameplay implications apart from not being able to explore certain areas or unlock certain gear I found it still to be fun I wish the decisions you made throughout the story and through some of the side missions had larger implications to be honest but a lot of it's just like 
largely tied to the game's economy and what's accessible at certain times. I'm not sure how it would work on a broader level, but I just wish there were larger implications for my actions at certain points. I found it kind of funny how at certain times the syndicates felt more dangerous hunting you than the Empire did, even if you had the max wanted level. Wanted levels in Star Wars Outlaws for me are fun to mess around with, but at the same time don't have larger enough implications and don't feel as intense as I think I'd like them to feel. In GTA, when you have a five star wanted level, you're pretty much screwed, if I'm being totally honest. You have to be constantly on the move or hiding. It's really honestly challenging to hide and the police and army are constantly coming after you to hunt you down and make sure you're dead. In Star Wars Outlaws, even though that's a bit of the case, the AI just aren't as intelligent, don't really come hunting for you. Yes, the higher you put your wanted level, the more speeder bikes they send, the more damage they do to you. But at the same time, even with the max wanted level, the idea of having to send you to the death troopers to remove your wanted level doesn't make the most sense to me. I kind of wish the death troopers actually came and hunted you down. And even when you get there, there's only like, what, four death troopers and then one Imperial officer, I believe, one ISB officer. And if you take them all down and activate the console, you're, you're free and you're all good and they forget all about it. I really wanted something a bit more intense here and just with larger implications closer to the GTA style wanted system. However, I did like the idea that they literally have to radio it in before you get a wanted level. So basically, if you kill all stormtroopers or all enemies in a certain location before one of them can call it in on a radio and report your crime, you won't have a wanted level. I like the idea of that. And that plays into the stealth aspect of the game. If you kill everyone or take everyone down before they can activate their radio, then you're all good because no one saw and no one knows. I feel like I'm still going to be messing around with the wanted level a bit more. There's more I want to do with it. I want to do some, I guess, police chase style videos and see how far I can get with max wanted level and the hardest difficulties. In space, I found it a lot more intense. They do really come hunting for you in space and seemingly a lot more of them. And it feels like, I guess, perhaps that's just the case because there's no way really to hide. You're just in space and TIE fighters are constantly chasing you and you can't really avoid their blast of fire as easily as you may be able to on the ground. Also, while we're talking about this, I just want to talk about the jumping to light speed gameplay mechanic and I loved how this was tied into having a wanted level. I loved that you were able to choose whatever planet you wanted to travel to from the ones in the game and then try and jump to light speed but couldn't process the jump until you hadn't taken damage from another ship for I think 10 or 15 seconds. Like you need to be in the clear before you can make the jump to light speed. This made for some exhilarating chases and felt so intense at times when you're trying to escape, when there's multiple enemies on your back and you're just trying to jump to light speed but you can't because you keep getting hit over and over again and your hyperdrive keeps resetting. Really cool gameplay idea. I also love this small detail where you can't jump to light speed if your path is obstructed. For example, you can't jump to light speed through the storm on Kajimi. If your ship is facing that storm, you have to face away from the storm or face in a different direction before you can actually make that jump. Same goes for the other planets. If you're facing a debris field or even a space station or something like that, you can't actually make the jump to light speed through that or facing in that direction. You have to point somewhere else. Just a small detail that makes it so much more immersive because yeah, you wouldn't be able to fly through that. Really cool. Star Wars Outlaws is definitely a flawed video game. There's no denying that. And at no time did I think I was playing the perfect Star Wars game, but there were definitely times where I was lost in the imagination of it, lost in the world, and had a really good time with it overall. I think it's fair that a lot of people are calling it kind of a seven out of 10 style game. It definitely feels that. It doesn't do anything that's really that groundbreaking or incredibly impressive, but overall is a fun time if you look past some of the glaring issues. I personally have had a really good time with this. I'm going to continue to do so. And I think it's going to go down as one of the most underrated and overhated Star Wars games of all time. I honestly hope that the audience for it grows, that more people continue to pick it up in the years to come and appreciate the cool stuff that it's done. And I hope we do get a second one, to be honest, at some point that improves some of the flaws and technical failings of Star Wars Outlaws. But for now, I'm going to have a lot more fun with this. Please let me know if you've enjoyed it and all your thoughts about Star Wars Outlaws in the comments. Thanks to everyone who supported all my videos about it as well. Really appreciate you guys and I appreciate the positivity. But for now, thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon.